to the green, driver. Almost ready. Green's out, let's go. Uh, four times. Yep, pay attention at fueling them tires. God forbid you hit pit road wide open. Somebody's got the bank ankle biters up. I don't know. Those are easy to kick. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're gonna fucking come after my goddamn foot, and they deserve what happens. That's the game of uh, fuck around and find out that they play. <laughs> yeah, I've been busy, man. I've been fucking working like 14 hour days here lately. Um, me and Bilt's about to start a league not for long. Uh, it's gonna be like a twenty-five dollar entry fee kind of deal. We're gonna run fifty percent races, four times where, um, and it's supposed to be the full race schedule of this year of the game. So, uh, oh, it'd be late. Like, uh, probably late in the evening. Well, I want to do at least 16 or 14 originally. Uh, I'm going to leave two positions for qualify your way in. But the entry fee in the league after Daytona will be 30 bucks, and to get in the league, it'll be 25 right at Daytona. The prize first at the end of the year wins the championship money and the championship box so obviously. <laughs> but you all go in a pot. We have about four hundred dollars. I said it's pretty good for a fucking championship week. I just, I mean, what's the point in running if you ain't running for some money? I always hear that. Everybody says, oh, we ain't running for no money. Well, <laughs> I can fix that. Yeah. But I mean, I know everybody can afford at least 25 to, I mean, like 25 bucks. It's not like that's like asking a lot for an entry. Yeah, I see me. He's in a T car. Yeah, that's the reason why I was saying not that, but what we're going to do is, is uh, I already kind of got the rules in mind. Uh, if you quit, like, if you get knocked out or if you just get lapped by normal, it won't count against you. But if you quit, whatever amount of laps that you went down, that's how many points get taken away from you. So we the incentive not to quit. <clears throat>
I want to get finished. Yeah. But that's why I was saying that league race, I mean, you want everybody to be in a hunt as long as possible to make it a race. So if quitting's not really an option, then you won't quit. <laughs> You'll have to grind it out. See, that's another deal. No, what I'm saying is, is uh, I'm not going to take it from you, but what I'm saying is if you commit to a race and you start it and, uh, in the middle of it or even like in the first quarter of it, say, fuck this, I'm not doing it anymore and just quit, then yeah, it'll count against you. <clears throat> and I've had a lot of people do that in leagues. I used to run them when I was younger and I got tired of that shit. See, I don't mind granting waivers as long as, like, you have a legit fucking reason. Yeah, you're not just quitting because you don't feel like being there. Like you're on and you don't want to race. Yeah. Right. But what I'm saying is, is I just don't... I don't really care so much as far as the missing aspect because that that count that's against you. So I mean, if you want to miss and you want to, I mean, when that kind of money on the line, I wouldn't want to miss. Okay, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> make it, yeah. That's Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. I mean, like I said, nobody's forcing you to put that money out. So, I mean, you're, if you want to be in part in the league, I mean, you'll put $25 up and be like, all right, <laughs> you're committed. <laughs> that's why I said anything after Daytona, because what I'll do for the people that come in later in the season, I'll give them last place points for every race that came up that they had missed so they're not like they're starting out with nothing but that's it's going to cost you an extra amount of money though it's going to cost you about five bucks more because i mean you're coming in late in the season and we're basically giving you giving you a legitimate shot at winning the money i <laughs> mean that's what i'm saying but what well, I mean is this like if you come in like week five or week six, I mean, you get last place points for every one of them, you're not gonna be, uh, I mean, too hurt and too bad. You're still gonna be able to make a run for it. Yeah, you weren't supposed to do that. That, um, that is to be determined, and I'm, uh, what I mean is, is, once I get the group that uh, everybody joins, like, if everybody like, collabs and wants to be involved, we'll all together kind of think of a good start date and time to be able to accommodate for everyone. Because I was thinking about uh, sometime around 9 o'clock, because that, I mean, normally everybody, the kids are in bed normally by 9, so for everyone... Usually everybody's settling down, chilling out, relaxing. <clears throat> so, say nine o'clock. Uh, a fifty percent race shouldn't last no more than maybe two hours. <clears throat> 
maybe two hours to an hour. Yeah, I see him. It'll be his last race. In here. So. I mean, you can't fucking race in these r rooms without at least one motherfucker coming in and trying to body slam people. Hey, bud, do me a favor. Pull your game out of your fucking console, break it in half, and never play it again. Either that or take, just take a hammer to your console. That works, too. Unfortunately. Probably because that guy came in here and fucking took everybody out. Yeah, I don't like women like this, but I mean, mm -hmm. fucking bullshit. I hit pit road. When I hit pit road, I hit it perfect because I mean, I I really thought I sped. <laughs> That's me. That's why I said that. I thought I I thought I sped. Yeah, Jeff Gordon gets on my ass all the time. So. <laughs> I didn't know you could have him. Is it? I, no, it's got like. Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon just always tells you to be smart. <laughs> Ten four. Yep, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That would be funny, dude. <laughs> that would be fucking hysterical. You hear the vice president of uh, Motorsports Games has been, or the president of Motorsports Games has been traded or demoted? Yeah, he does, especially after last year's game. Motherfucker deserves a lawsuit, he's the way he deserves. Against every, all the people that bought that damn game. Fucking fifty dollars. I mean, drop everybody. I paid. I don't know about y'all, but I paid fifty bucks for a damn thing. And yeah, as soon, dude, I, and you know what sucks is you get so hyped for it, and it's like, oh yeah, you're excited, and it, dude. That was the biggest letdown I ever had in my life. What's up, War? Dude, I wasn't coming at you sideways about that. I was just like, I don't know if people can understand. I hate that. I got, I got to yank your fucking chain a little bit because, really, honestly, anytime I ever race you, you're in a fucking slider room. That's just what aggravates me, and I know you're better than that. Yeah, but I just get aggravated with that shit. I'm like, man, come on. Uh, I mean, you don't spend all that time on fucking setups and working on them just to not use them. I mean, come on. But I was telling T-Bird what I was thinking about. Uh, you interested in that? 
because I was looking at racing it at about 25 per person, and what I mean is, is if you come in after Daytona, we'll give you last 20 points for every whatever place that you lose. What I mean is, is say you miss like races all the way up to week six. Basically, if you put 30 bucks in, I'll give you a charge you a late fee. Uh, I was thinking about like nine o'clock in the evening. That way, everybody can accommodate to it, and everybody's kids are pretty much in bed and. Well, I was thinking if if you get at least 16 people, you should have a pot of $400, at least. Yeah, I might. I was thinking more like a Wednesday, maybe. Like midweek racing. <sighs> See, I don't want it to interfere with the actual racing. That's the reason why I was more or less trying to do it like before the weekend. What's up, Monty? I was just telling these guys, me and Bill, think about running a, um, a full race schedule um, with 16 drivers. Uh, entry fee of $25, and the pot goes to a champion at the end of the year. Or the end of the season. 50% lead. If you're interested. Wednesday night at 9, maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna run this and then I'm gonna run one more and then I'm probably gonna dip myself. I gotta go run in, uh, Uber for a little bit. Make this make some money. I know we run from like seven to nine. <laughs> Same way. Please don't write no way. That's all I ask. <sighs> Boomer, you got a copy? I don't know that guy. And he's out. Alright. What's up, my bad? Hello. What you been up to? Having fun? Tell you what, I'm excited for that North Wilkesboro race that's coming up. All the way to the wall. That's gonna be fucking raw, man. Got They're coming in tires for that clear. team. Got one inside. All clear.
Oh yeah. I want to go to that, but I'm all the way down here in Florida. That'd be a hell of a commitment. Yeah, I try to go to every Daytona, but the last one I went to, that one was pretty pissed me off, pretty much. If I could wait. Well, I mean, sitting in turn one, I'm getting rained on, and they never throw a fucking yellow, and I know they're going to die in turn one when they get to it. So, I mean, that's what pissed me off. I'm literally sitting in turn one getting poured on, and I'm waiting on a caution, and I'm waiting on it. I'm like, they're, they're going to call it, right? They were in turn two when it started raining. <laughs> I seen them hit that corner. I knew they weren't coming out of it. <laughs> I already knew. I said, <laughs> I said to my stepdad, <laughs> he went with me, and uh, my mom and a couple of my friends went with me. They, uh, I told him, I said, they're not going to make it into one. They're like, no, they're not. Are they going to throw the yellow? They were waiting for it. And I, I cringed when they hit turn one. <laughs> I think so. Uh, yeah, no, Dylan made it through it. I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say it was Chase. Because I know he was up near the front at the end of that. He had that uh, happen in New Hampshire. Him and Kyle Bush had that happen too. It was the same year too, on top of that. Still there. <laughs> That's messed up, man. I don't like Kyle Bush more than the next guy, but damn, man. <laughs> I don't hate him. I hate Denny. <laughs> He, that's like Kyle Bush. Off the track, he's the nicest man on earth, but on track, he's about the uh, ones you want to strangle. Yeah, Tony Stewart's arrogant. Uh, I've met him outside of like racing, and he won't even hardly even like acknowledge you. But, I mean. Larry McMillan is just one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet yourself as well. That's another person if you ever get a chance to meet somebody. Uh, Larry McMillan. Larry Mack. Yeah, that's one of the coolest fucking crew chiefs you'll ever meet in your life. Chad, he's an asshole. Yeah. He, he's a dickhead. Like, straight up, he thinks he is... The fucking shit. Anybody's gonna, I'm not saying gonna know anybody's gonna replace DW, but they needed some kind of sense of humor up there besides Mike Joy. <laughs> nope. That's just like trying to fill the shoes of Barney Hall on MRN. He ain't gonna do it. Nope. What aggravates me is, is, but I really think it's more or less, uh, I don't know if it's more or less Larry or Fox, but I, I really don't see why they don't put him in there full time. Like, I mean, everybody enjoys his analysis, everybody enjoys him being in a booth, so I mean, why are you going to, yeah. I did the same thing.
That's what I'm saying. I really think for the Darlington throwback race, they need to have all three of them in the booth. I know that sounds crazy. I know it's an NBC race, but... Wait, no, they have two Darlington races this year. That's right. The throwback race, I think Fox does cover. You're almost out of gas. <clears throat> but I think they need to do that. That would be incredible. Plus, it being the 20th anniversary of Ricky Craven and uh, Kurt Busch and... They're awesome finish. Yeah, they're the Grand Marshals for that, by the way. They announced it. Yeah, they announced for the throwback race of Darwin and Kurt Busch and Ricky Craig was supposed to be the Grand Marshals for it. Yeah, I was too. That was insane, man. I don't think I went... I think the last time I went that crazy for a finish was, uh, was at Talladega in 2011. Whenever they finish, I think like six wide, I want to say. Other than that, yeah. But as far as the beating and banging and getting in each other, them two fucking put it on the line, so. He really is. And the thing about it is, is he was only going to get better. He was just in the right spot whenever he did what he or did what happened to him. That was just wrong, man. NASCAR pretty much screwed him up as the rest of his career. I still hold that against him for that. I mean, out of all the technology you've had over the years for safety innovation and everything in between, and then you're, you're going to go back. How can you go fucking back? Like serious? You know better than that. And he says he has a ride anytime he wants it. So if he ever decides to, if he ever does get back, which I don't believe it's going to happen, but if he ever does come back, he has, he's got a ride. Clear out, hammer down. Yep. I just feel bad for the man because I've seen him go through James Finch racing and I've seen him go through all of those fucking race teams and all the aggravation he went through and then he finally landed him a good rider with Nanny and was doing good and then bam it's like because <laughs> even Sir Haas didn't really treat him good Yeah, I don't know who's gonna have that ride whenever. I know it sounds crazy. I know he's with Chevrolet a good bit, and I don't think he'd ever leave him. But Josh Berry really deserves that car. Yep. When I heard he was a development driver over there or waiting in the wings at Sir Haas, I already knew. I was like, uh, <laughs> I think Cole Custer's gonna come back though. I think so, because his dad owns a portion of Haas Automation. That's the only reason why Cole even has a slot there. And they put Cole in the 41. I tell you, one guy, if he don't get his head out of his ass the next day uh, and perform, he's gonna be out, and that's Brandon Jones. That kid has been in so many different rides until it's not even funny, top tier equipment, and he ain't really done shit. He's he's driving the car that fucking won five races last year and was running up in the top front every fucking week. I mean, come on. <laughs> you can't even get a top five, Harley? <laughs> Something's wrong. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, where he pushed him up.
He's getting his dose of humbleness right now, though. He really is. He's in that cut series running. He's running like fucking top 20, top, I mean, top 15 every week here lately, and he's starting to see what it's like. They're racing up near fat. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That that experience of being in that top tier series and that big fact could teach you a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he just came out of Xfinity dominating and busting his ass and stuff, and he's thinking he's on top of the world. He jumps in that cut car. He's like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> And I really don't think Norris has got the good equipment that he really needs neither, though. I mean, Eric Jones ain't even really running up there nowhere near like he deserves either. <clears throat> I, I threw my hands up in the air. Where are we on this? I'm like, I'm tired of trying to wrap my head around it why in the fuck we had good racing i mean don't get me wrong we didn't have great racing but with this car we had we were getting to a sweet spot with it and then they changed it it's like every time you get in a sweet spot with a race car they want to change it and it's like well you go through this problem every time you change that change cars i mean it's just the way of life <laughs> I listen to it sometimes, but I ain't heard this week's. Oh, yeah. And I still believe that was because of Toyota. I, I told people that for years. I think that's because of Toyota that caused that. Because Toyota was bringing in so much fucking money into the sport. And they were breaking valve trains. They didn't have a valve train to withstand what they were putting out. And they were breaking tra valve trains over and over. So basically they were DNFing like <laughs> a bunch. <laughs> They had him 14. What do you think Jeff Gordon got the fastest qualifying record with? I mean, two or six average. I remember at Michigan they would show in qualifying them getting down the corner at 2 fucking 15, 217, getting down in the corner just on a qualifying lap. I mean. <laughs> No. I mean, because everything's the same. It's like driving an IROC car. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, because you ain't got enough power to spin the wheels. Good job, boy. Yeah. And it has a lot to do with that wider tire, though, too. I tell them that you got less horsepower with a wider tire. What do you expect is going to happen? Yeah. They need to narrow that rear tire up a little bit and, and give them more power. They're all about that money, and what it is is they're scared about this TV deal. They're so fucking freaked out about this TV deal. They're like, they're running the sport around on top of it while doing it.
<laughs> yeah, he's bow and I'm weak. <laughs> <He's> sick. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, we'll run here. Fuck it, why not? Yeah, because you would spend, like I said, spend the fucking tires coming off the corner. Mm-hmm. Same with Atlanta. Uh, when it, before they repaved Atlanta, like 2011, 2012, like them years, man, watching the motherfuckers come off the corner, the right side door, you would see more of the right side door than you would the driver door. <laughs> yep. That's like I still think one of the best races at Atlanta was between Gordon and Johnson that day. I mean that that just showed pure fucking tire fall off, showed pure hanging on thin edge, everything. <laughs> I mean <laughs> What's sad is, is when your Xfinity cars is running faster than your cup cars, you got a problem. I didn't either until I went or until I watched that race at Auto Club. And if you notice, they really weren't showing that scoreboard up there, right? the mile per hour. But whenever, if you would watch it, man, uh, during the Xfinity race, they were busting on, uh, close to almost a half a mile an hour, or like five to six mile an hour faster getting into turn one than what the cup cars were. And I'm like, hey, what the fuck is our sport going to, man? <laughs> No offense, but I kind of like the problem we had last week. What I mean is, is where they were basically limited on tires. I think, really honestly, if they limited the tires a lot more, like in, instead of every pit stop them being able to throw a set on, pretty much. I mean, that would help a lot with the tire fall off issue as well. Yeah, Trex was pissed because his crew chief didn't even tell him. He's like, we're going to put basically scuffs on. He's like, why didn't you tell me that? He's like, I didn't think you needed to know. What do you mean you don't think you needed to know? I mean, he's a fucking driver. He needs to know what he has going in the corner. <laughs> Oh, I guarantee you after this year he's gone. Because, I mean, after that race right there, I know that put a bad taste in Truex's mouth. Truex don't put up with that shit.
job. I will admit that now, yeah, the mile and a half stuff has been a lot better, but I mean, I think very honestly they need to do what they were doing prior and give them more power at the short tracks and leave them alone at the mile and a half. If you, even if you ramped them up, because right now they're running like 675, I think, if I'm not mistaken, and they're running right at cost of 7. But uh, if you gave them like right at 800 for those weekends, you would see a lot of difference, a big difference, especially even with the lower spoiler on it. Let's keep the short package that they got on it. But what I'm saying is give them more power. Because that little bitty spoiler on there, yeah, yeah. Just give them a lot more power. Go. Still there. Are you gonna go? But yeah, uh, the mine has stuff has been pretty decent though. Yep. You yeah, know these road courses I feel like they're underpowered as well. Very good. But yeah, I don't mind so much the number of it. It's just they need a, like, I think they need more power too. That's why I'm getting that because if you if you can stand in it, uh, you have more opportunity to lose the ass in, lose you know it's not. You're, you ain't gonna have the grip to go into the corner and fucking die bomb it like you would with lower power is what I'm saying. You're gonna make that corner quicker than what you would normally. I think that's gonna be a joke. It's like with that indie road course. No, you're good. But yeah, that Indy Road Course, that shit, uh, that put a bad taste in my mouth. When, especially whenever I'm seeing cars go like Dukes of Hazard cars coming through that area. Race cars are not meant to fly. Yep. They can barely get to a fucking indie bird course without piling on top of each other, much less fucking putting stock cars on it. Got a car low now. All right, you're clear. Um, apparently they got it on iRacing. and I seen it a while back. Yep. Yep. Car outside. Hold your line. All right, you're clear. Just look up the indie or not uh, indie, but the Chicago Street Course on. And, uh, I race them. And they said they've changed some of it already, but it, as far as the main base, uh, the track's the same.
I enjoyed it pretty much. Yeah. I know one thing to truck race in Martinsville this past weekend was a fucking joke. Yeah, but where NASCAR really fucked up with that is, is is trying to promote that they would be able to race under rain conditions, and that's where they fucked up. And they weren't trying to race under rain. All they were trying to do is basically drive the track quicker with the race cars. That's the reason why they brought those uh, tires there to begin with. It wasn't really to run in the rain. Yeah, they say it was shredding them. Five to go this time, five. Well, if they're going to do that in, in the beginning of the season, they need to do it at the end of the season. They don't need to be doing this fucking shit where, okay, this race ain't that important, so we're, every race is fucking important. I mean, every race means points, so, I mean, that race is never less important than the one in Daytona, or whenever they run their last truck event. I'm planning on it. All right, we'll hang out definitely, man. Yeah. Oh shit, your first time you'll be in luck with me then. I know a lot of places to go around there, man. I've been going to date. I hadn't missed a 400 in probably like six years until a couple of years ago. I don't mind it as long as they decide to throw yellows when it rains. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would hope so because man I seen what happens when it doesn't at first hand that one is not pretty man well I knew they were going to go into the corner but I knew as soon as they got to like where they had to rotate I knew I knew as soon as the car went to transition it was going to be bad <laughs> I was in the sands when Austin Dillon went through the fence too. I had covered in fucking gear oil and antifreeze and or coolant, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I normally sit in turn one. Uh, the reason being this is because you normally see sitting in one, you can basically see all the way down uh, from basically right where the trial will begins all the way into turn number three. Once, whenever it gets to four, you can't see nothing. Basically, just that straightaway coming up to the trial where you can't see. But if you sit in four, the garage blocks everything to where you can't really see nothing. Ten four. But you already got your tickets? Oh, okay. Damn, you paid some money, boy. Damn. Yeah, a future reference. Uh, um, if you sit uh, down towards turn one, basically right before the second section... It's like, it's no more than like a hundred, like 75 to a hundred bucks. So you sitting in that section over there near the start finish line, you're probably spending about 150. 
That's what I figured. I learned that lesson early. <laughs> and by the way, uh, give you real good advice. If you get there early, which I know you you will be, because you're coming from probably out of town. Um, it's best to it's best to eat um, before you go in there. They got places right there in front of Daytona. They got fucking Panda Express, Mexican restaurant, Cracker Barrel, fucking Chick Fil A. They got fucking uh, Taco Bell. I mean, basically the whole area in front of there. They got Target right there. So basically, in that whole parking lot right there, they got plenty of places to eat. Yeah, they got they got basically everything right there. Going in there, uh, I went I went in there last year. And my my stepdad he was pissed off because he paid eight uh, eight dollars for a fucking hot dog, and when he got it, that bitch was so goddamn hard you could play basketball with it pretty much. That's what he said. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the bread was so fucking hard. But yeah, I mean, they got places inside of there, but they market it up uh, like a lot inside of that place. Hey, if you do take a cooler, make sure you buy one that is clear. What I mean is, is if you take a cooler with you, which you can do, you can take a cooler inside the racetrack. Just make sure it's a clear cooler. So they, yeah. I mean, they let me, but I mean, there was a couple people that I seen where they wouldn't let them even in with it, and it was confusing. I just had it open. No, I just had it open. Well, I mean, I walked up there and I just had it open. I was like, hey, I ain't got nothing but drinks in here. They go up, damn it. They're like, okay, let me go through. <laughs> I didn't. Ha I bought one that didn't have like a lot of po pockets or anything, stuff like that. I just bought a regular like bag, basically cooler, and took it with me. Um, they got a lot of, yeah I will too man <laughs> take it easy but what I was going to say is uh, they have a lot of festivities out front so I mean uh, if you ain't got nothing to do in the beginning go down there they got like all kinds of shit from Toyota to Chevrolet I mean the displays down there are unreal I'll show you around. It ain't hard. <laughs> All right, y'all take it easy. Ten four. Take it easy, bud.